I enjoy hiking in our national park. The landscape, it's just beautiful. A green lawn in our gray city. However, due to my recent discovery, I'm a bit more scared from time to time while hiking in this woods. A couple of days prior to writing this, I took my usual route from the park's parking area and headed towards its other entry point. The park is relatively big, and it has a lot of things that can be seen. For example, there is a huge lake with a bird watch tower, an army camp, a farm with cattle, and some old bunkers that are scattered through the park. Last week, I took the usual route that passes by the lake. At some point, I came across the usual crossroad, where the dirt path meets a more modern asphalt road that is made for the bikers and forestry department to use for navigating the forest. I continued on my right where, after a couple of meters, the asphalt road branches into two tracks. One dirt path going uphill, and around a small hill that is situated in the middle of the park. And the other is the fresh asphalt that goes around the lake back to the main parking lot. But before the branching, I noticed something that I haven't noticed for my time coming to this park. On my left, there is a small, barely visible path that led into the wooded tree line that surrounds the road. I stared at it and decided to approach it. And to my surprise, it was indeed a hidden path. It looked as if it was recently used. This is mainly due to the floral patches that were smudged and pressed as if someone had walked through here. But again, this is a national and public park and it's not a surprise for something like this to be discovered by someone else before me. As I walked the enclosed by trees and foliage path, I was led to a small opening where the road continued on my left and right. The left path had some old benches and monkey bars, and if you were to continue, there is a big circular opening with pine trees surrounding it. That's odd, I thought to myself. I've been hiking and exploring this park for nearly two years now, and I've never seen such a place. I took some time to capture some shots with my phone, and then spent some time just strolling around forgotten monkey bars and benches, taking some more pictures. And then I sat on one of the wooden benches and began scrolling through the pictures that I took so far. After some scrolling and deleting pictures, I was ready to leave the area and head to the other direction that I haven't explored yet. But as soon as I got up, my eyes caught a small black thing near the left foot of the bench. Upon closer inspection, I noticed it was an SD card, and even more surprising, it was an 8 GB one. I always appreciate finding things that can store other things, such as USB flash drives, SD cards, or even old CDs that can be cleaned and repurposed. However, I cannot lie that I'm kind of a sucker for finding old stuff that may have something hidden inside them, and the pure thought of it excited me. But I know that not everything in this world is rosy and clean. I had heard stories before of USB flash drives that contained viruses and other dark secrets that no one should learn about. Now, I am aware of such risks and this is why whenever I find an old USB or anything that may contain information, I use an old laptop that I have in order to keep myself safe from anything dangerous. I took the SD card and decided to leave the park earlier that day. On my way back through the old foliage, my foot was caught on something causing me to fall to the ground. I grunted as I stood up and took a glimpse behind me, seeing the shiny padlock that emerged from the scattered leaves. I went over to it and with my feet, I managed to kick some of the foliage and saw that a metal hatch was hidden underneath them. Upon closer investigation, the hatch's lid seemed rusted and old, compared to the padlock that was holding it shut. Behind the hatch, slightly deeper into and behind some young pine trees, there was an enormous pile of leaves and branches, and situated next to them 
was a small metal plaque which read the following description. NE73, Forestry Department. Now, I'm aware of old structures being scattered around the forest, such as the bunkers previously mentioned. So, perhaps, uh, this was some form of shelter by the forestry department, or some old storage that in case of fire or something else, it could be used accordingly. I dismissed the whole thing, however. All I did was take some photos simply because it was another find after all. When I came home, I immediately rushed to my room and took the old laptop out of my closet, plugged it in and let it turn on. Since it's about 5 years old, and probably infected with a couple of malware, it does take a couple of minutes to fully load. So meanwhile, I searched for an SE adapter and prepared myself a nice cup of warm coffee. The time had finally arrived. I sat on my desk, SD plugged in and loading. Before entering the folder, I was shocked at how much space this thing had left. The bar indicating that the capacity was easily over half full. Now this was getting more interesting. I clicked on the icon and a massive camera folder came up. I opened the file and it was full with videos and camera footage. I opened the first picture and began scrolling through them, hoping to find some more information on who perhaps this camera belonged to. Most of the shots were of mountains, sea, and other landscapes, and some of them were portraits and close-ups of different people. They were of amazing quality. Really, the man who must have owned this camera had to be talented. After about ten minutes of scrolling, I was near the end of the folder's contents. And this is where things became scary. I reached a strange picture of a man in camel clothes and a cap entering the very same spot that I had entered today. I only managed to recognize the spot by the asphalt road and the surrounding landscape. It seems the picture was taken from afar, and some foliage covering the lens indicate that perhaps the photographer was hidden somewhere. The next pictures were of the same spot, but this time the man exiting the area. The photographer tried to take some closer pictures of his face, but it was barely visible. He seemed quite bulky, and had a short black beard, but the rest of his facial expressions were hidden from his soldier cap and black sunglasses. The following images, however, were more disturbing. There were shots of the very same path that I took today, and even more strange some close-up pictures of the hatch that I had tripped on. Although, so far, things seemed quite strange and odd. It wasn't until the video that began playing after I pressed next. My so far, I had skipped any video that was in the folder, but thinking that it might have to do with the hatch, I let it play. The video showed the photographer with a bolt cutter cutting the padlock and opening the hatch. As soon as he did, I saw him immediately cursing and covering his mouth with his arm as if a smell hit him immediately. While turning around to pick the camera up for a moment, I saw his face. I immediately paused the video and I took a good look at him. Why do I have this strange feeling that I've seen him before? He had long brown hair, wore a dark gray beanie. He had a goatee beard and a bush mustache and a piercing in his right ear. I screenshotted it and kept it until the video ended. I thought about making a reverse image search afterwards or something like that. Maybe the post was in some photography groups that I'm a part of. Maybe somebody could identify him. But I'm sure that I did see his face somewhere. The video resumed and the man picked up his camera and began climbing the ladder, descending into the hole. The camera was shaking and blurred as it wasn't adjusted to the darkness. The man began cursing and breathing heavily, meanwhile trying to keep the camera in his hands while holding the ladder. His steps finally met the ground, and they echoed in the tight space. He turned to point to something, but as soon as his flash made contact, he screamed in shock. Now to me, I only saw a dark smudge on what I presumably thought it was the floor, but to him, it must have been something horrifying. 
I was very creeped out by the situation. I was hearing his voice trembling with fear and the camera shook so much that it was nauseating to watch. I heard his vomit echo in the darkness and the camera kept going in and out of focus. The man began sobbing. I almost wanted to close the video and just delete the entire folder, but something was off about what I was watching. After about two minutes of indescribable content, he tried adjusting the camera to finally get a glimpse on what he was seeing. Okay, Anthony. Okay, keep it cool. It's fine. Just take some pictures and get out. I heard his trembling voice through my speakers. The sensation was dreadful. As the uneasiness began crippling over me, more than five minutes ago, I was watching beautiful scenery and landscape pictures, and all of a sudden, I was hit with this thing. Some form of horror or found footage mystery. The man I now know as Anthony finally adjusted his camera to a blurry focus to a clearer view. The camera was facing his shoes and then slowly panned the direction of what he was staring at this whole time. My stomach began to turn, and I remember my heart beginning to beat from anxiety as the view footage became more and more clear. And despite his shaking hands making the video nauseating, I could very well see a shape of a body wrapped in some form of a garbage bag and tied with duct tape placed on a concrete floor next to an old wooden table. Near the body, there were some leftover rolls of the very same tape, along with dark spots on the concrete floor, presumably blood. Anthony began to approach the body. And this is where my heart began to beat even faster. The whole situation was unnerving. Having a camera with a flashlight only pointing to something so morbid and even worse, going near was the perfect recipe for a horror cliche. I expected the body to jump or something, but that never happened. What did happen, however, was something else entirely. The side beam became more clear, but... Something echoed in his voice through them. A name, I thought, but initially I dismissed it. However, when Anthony ripped the bag where the head must have been, I froze. An almost decaying face of a young woman was visible. Her lips were blue and cracked, her skin pale and rotting in places near the eyes and mouth. Her once red hair must have flown wildly in the air, only to be encapsulated in decay and a plastic bag placed in a forgotten bunker underground. The man began sobbing more and more repeating the name, finally this time more loudly. Martha, oh Martha, God please help me. Anthony began sniffing as if he was getting his mind back on track. He began ascending the ladder and as he left the hatch, a grumpy voice was heard from the left, as if somebody yelled at him to stop. But Anthony began running. In the final minutes of the video, Anthony was shown facing the camera and fumbling before the video finally ends. And for a brief moment, I saw the monkey bars, the very same ones that I saw earlier today, where I found the SD card. After the horrific video was over, I removed the SD card and sat back staring at the monitor letting all things I saw sink in. Maybe after an hour before writing this, I had searched his face using the screenshot that I made while watching the video, and used his name and other tags and, to my surprise, I did find out something. Now it was much more clear why I thought I had saw his face before. There was a clip from a news broadcast about maybe less than a month ago showing his name and face. Anthony Lee, a photographer that was currently missing. His last whereabouts were in St. Thomas a National Park. The police are currently investigating any leads. Further on the topic, his fiance Martha Lee is still missing for the past month now, and no whereabouts of her have come to the surface. I plan to go to the police later this day showing them the SD card that I found, in hopes to help catch the horrible person behind all of these crimes. 
Um, but before I do, I'm planning to copy the data. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's something else that uh, I didn't notice before. Furthermore, I haven't seen any more about the couple or who they are, as my research wasn't very extensive. But I might post some updates if I learn anything in the future. I'm still shaken from this whole deal, however, but somewhat, and I'm glad that I came upon this, because maybe at least now these two poor souls may have a chance of hope for resting in peace, as they should.